It is noon in Oslo. It is 2.30 p.m. in Kabul. I'm Monita Rajpal. And I'm Zane Virgie. This is World One Live from London. Defense lawyers in Norway are giving their closing arguments at the trial of the man who has admitted to killing 77 people in Norway's worst peacetime massacre. Prosecutors say Anders Bering Breivik is insane and should be held in a psychiatric and, uh, unit. Diana Magne has been following the story. She joins us now from Berlin with more on what's the closing arguments and what they've been made up of, Diana. Hi, Monita. Well, Gia Lepichnat, who is the chief defense counsel for Brevik, has just concluded his arguments. I've been following uh, the tweets from the courtroom and uh, our sources also in there. The president of Ecuador says Julian Assange's request for political asylum is being carefully considered and that his country could not allow the WikiLeaks founder to suffer political persecution. Mr. Julian Assange is under the protection of the Ecuadorian state in our embassy in London. Becca Brooks, a former top executive of Rupert Murdoch's British newspaper group, has appeared in court in London. She and her husband are charged with conspiring to remove documents, computers and other potential evidence from the police investigation into phone hacking. CNN's Dan Rivers is live outside the court with more. Dan. Yeah, well, they were in court for about uh, half an hour. <coughs> Excuse me, this was a... In London. The ratings agency Moody's has downgraded some of the world's biggest banks. Fifteen of them big hitters, including Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan and Deutsche Bank. They had their credit ratings cut. The announcement came after trading closed on Wall Street, but speculation about the downgrades has dragged shares down during Thursday's session. Moody. Those discussions will set the stage for next week's crucial European summit in Brussels. Let's get more on this from CNN's Jim Bolton. He joins us now here in the studio. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the downgrade mm. and what this actually means. Because a lot of people will be watching and saying, well, wait a minute, if my bank is on that list, what does that mean for me? Well, I don't think it means anything for the consumers. Uh, the, the downgrade just makes it more expensive for the banks to raise money and to do their Sometimes business. Sometimes it takes a while to convince people to go uh, towards uncharted territory, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uncharted territory is wrong. Mm. Jim, thank you very much. Greece's position inside the Eurozone seems safe, for now at least, but by tomorrow, either Greece or Germany. Welcome back. Yeah, world leaders are wrapping up a meeting in Rio de Janeiro designed to come up with a new roadmap for sustainable development, but they've been accused of making embarrassingly little progress so far. What they are trying to do could be likened to squaring the circle. The fashion designer, she's leading the push for a more sustainable fashion industry. She joins us now from Rio on the phone. Catherine, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, you know, what did you think about the discussions that were taking place in Rio and what came out of it, uh, if anything at all? Well, as far as I can see, absolutely nothing. It's just a conference to have another conference to um, make sure that, you know, no radical changes. In terms of what the, what the onus on the fashion industry to take charge and actually take control of what they are doing as well when it comes to promoting sustainable fashion, where, do you, where is the industry at at this point? Well, I think the only thing that's made the change, you know, that's forced the changes in the fashion industry so far. What about, there's consumer pressure on one side, but what about from the brands themselves, the companies themselves, the, the companies that own many of these high fashion, high design houses as well? What about the onus on them to actually say, you know what, we're not going to do business, we're not going to create products that are not sustainable? Well, this would be very much going against... Um, you know, the, the, the kind of modus vivendi. The, you know, the Syrian opposition group says almost 170 people were killed in brutal violence on Thursday. If that figure is accurate, it would make it the bloodiest oh. single day since the government uh, said in April it would abide by a With ceasefire. election results delayed, Egypt's presidential race has come down to one candidate's word against the others. The Muslim Brotherhood says it has proof that its candidate won last weekend's runoff and Thursday for uh, King James there, LeBron James, two years ago boasting about how many NBA titles he would win after his controversial big money move from Cleveland to Miami. Well, it looked like an empty promise when the Heat lost in the finals last year, but as uh, Alex Thomas can explain now, it's looking a bit more realistic. Yeah, now he seems like he knows what he's mm -hmm. talking about. Third time lucky then for LeBron James. After Ouch, that was, that was, yeah, okay. They we'll could end up regretting that if there was a surprise yeah, result Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alex, thank you very much. You're watching World One Live from London. Up
That was uh, Karen Klein talking about the cruelty she endured from school children as a bus monitor. But after the aftermath of her story, uh, well, the aftermath of the story may restore your faith in humanity. Here's more from Mary Snow. It only takes seconds to see why this video has... And just at last check, the donations now, that figure stands at $450,265. That's pretty amazing. Stuff. Wow. Pedro, I'm, thank you so much. You're watching World One live from London. I'm Zane Vergy. I'm Onita Rajpal. We leave you now with the scene in Egypt's Tahrir Square where crowds of people are protesting the delay in announcing the outcome of last weekend. That story throughout the day. This is World One.